Hello everyone, welcome to Book of Dawn IOTH Academy. I'm your Game Master, Tormented by Gnomes. Joining me at my table today, we've got Leg Day, Lemon Kiwi, and Necra. Leg Day, how are things in your world? Not too bad. Today was a hectic day with some Pogash streaming with Lemon. We, uh, we fragged out a lot, we entered even more, and designed some hot dog-based superheroes, which was fantastic. <laughs> The design is inexorable. Levin, <laughs> uh, explain yourself. Justify hey, uh, your sins. We had the, the glizzy gobbler or some sh something in our game. The green glizzler. The green glizzler. So then we decided to draw all these different glizzard characters, including glizzard entertainment, glizzy McGuire, King Glizzard III, Queen Glizabeth, and the list goes on. <laughs> so, that was our the, day. The queues were long. So. <laughs> The queues are long and filled with horrors. Uh, Necro, what's going on? Welcome back. How are things? Thanks. What a what a weird intro to come back to. The two of them were really made for each other. The, the world us, is Necro. round. And uh, yeah. Join us in Glizzard World. <laughs> oh, no. Now someone no, has to do the map. No, no, now no. someone has to do the map, the Glizzard World map. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, stop! That was like the first thing that I thought of too, is replacing <laughs> all of like the rides of like the Blizzard World map with like hot dogs. And I really don't like the image that I have in my head. Oh, don't be a weenie. So, <laughs> don't be Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gonna be one of those games. It is. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, welcome. It is awesome to have you. We play this D&D campaign every Wednesday with these fine folks and with Crowen, whose flight is delayed and will hopefully be joining us at the break. Our heroes are in their fifth year attending Ioth Academy, the greatest school of magic in the four kingdoms of Anakra. The world outside is ruled by tyrannical evil fiends, the Infernals, and their minions. But inside the golden sphere of this magic school, things are supposed to be safe. Unfortunately, as our heroes have discovered over the years, that is not always the case. In our last adventure, they opened the door to Tarsal Moor's vault, a hidden sanctum beneath this, the hall where they live and attend their classes by completely bypassing the puzzle using uh, Lemon Kiwi's void magic, which is fine. I'm not bitter about that at all. That's completely okay. <laughs> I'm sorry! They entered the vault and discovered that it was not just one room full of cool stuff, but instead it was the secret laboratory of the long-vanished wizard Tarsal Moor himself, who was experimenting into the very nature of life and death. They encountered a pool of lost souls that emerged and attacked them in panic. They explored a parlor with a haunted harpsichord and a bunch of ghosts who were cursed to stay there entertaining and serving at the table. They ran across a shadow demon imprisoned for hundreds of years by Tarselmoor and tore it to shreds before it could escape. Furthermore, strife has arisen within the party, for their friend Alexander vanished not long ago and was replaced by a mysterious and young dawn elf named Renan. Renan has been traveling with the party, played by Crowen, and will be hopefully again joining us after the half, but he has a lot of secrets he doesn't even himself fully understand, and Garnet knows that the Infernals, the cruel gods who rule over the outside world, have been plotting against Ioth Academy. She herself has been ensnared, or done the ensnaring, in several of their plots, and she knows that one of the Infernals is behind Renan's appearance in some way. She just hasn't proven how. Before they could come to blows over their disagreement, they made their way into another section of the vault, a library filled with books of knowledge forbidden to young students such as themselves. Within, they discovered some curious signs. Something had recently been disturbed. There was a piece of paper on the ground written in the old mage Tarselmore's hand with today's date, and it was written hundreds of years ago. Furthermore, there is a small mechanical librarian construct inside, but when it turned to speak to them, moments after one of our heroes accidentally spoke most of the name of one of the Dread Infernals, Anachronis, the Machine mm. Prince of Chaos, that mechanical little librarian spoke with the voice of the Eschaton Clock itself, telling them that they had failed to go through with their part in the design, killing the teacher of war magic. Inril Untermaller, 
and that it had come up with another option. It is into this chaotic situation that we bring back Necro, who missed last week's episode. So, uh, Leg Day and Lemon Kiwi, is there anything important that I have left out that you think ought to be relayed while I get a couple of things ready behind the scenes? Uh, Garnet kind of evil mommy snapped and tore a demon to shreds with her oh, tentacles. Yeah, we could have left that part out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've just taken out my frustrations on a demon daddy, okay? It's, he deserved it. Really okay. doesn't surprise me. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean, what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, knowing your character? <laughs> okay, <laughs> Brennan started it. He cast a suggestion on me. A, su a suggestion on me. <laughs> Crow and open the PvP doors. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> he started it. Okay. I could have blasted him, but I chose peace. <laughs> <laughs> I started blasting at the wall instead. Anyways, I started blasting. So I started blasting. <laughs> Should we uh, cover the mechanics of the stream integrations as well? Yeah, people? that's a great call. Leg day, always with the reads. So there are a couple of different ways, if you are new to the stream, that you can meddle in the lives of our heroes. And some of these past meddlings have completely derailed our short 12 episode campaign, which is now in episode 45. <laughs> If you have, if you accumulate channel points, you can spend them on giving our heroes inspiration, which will help them out, giving them disadvantage, which will thwart them, giving them treasures, giving them healing boosts, and a couple of other things. Uh, you can also use stream loots to collect cards, and these cards are things you can play during the stream. They'll pop up in the middle of things, they'll play a sound, and they could do all sorts of other things, from inviting the different gods of Anakra to meddle in their affairs, to inflicting a pop quiz on our heroes that they have to pass or their grades go down, to giving them extra luck, all sorts of chaos. So if you do exclamation point stream loots in the chat, you'll be able to see a little bit more about that. Uh, you can support us on coffee as well and do an act of God, which will similarly invite the gods of Anakra to meddle in our heroes' affairs. Uh, but overall, we're just super excited to have you join us on our adventures, and uh, we hope that you'll stick around and see what happens to our heroes next. Speaking of which, let me change scenes real quick to take us to Tarselmore's vault. Dun, dun, dun. And here they are when last we left our heroes inside the mysterious library that has been sealed for the past hundreds of years. Tomes of arcane and forbidden lore lie on every shelf. Ghostly green candles provide an eerie light to this sanctum. A statue of Tarsal Moor, his face a skull, his hands mere bones, shrouded in robes and cloaked in arcane power. Desks with arcane paraphernalia upon them, another door leading to the north. Well, a passageway leading to a door in the north. And in the northwest corner of this room, the small mechanical contraption that just spoke to you in the echoing voice of Anachronus. That can't be good. And just to refresh you on the last thing that it said... You have failed to comply with our previous terms of agreement. We have discovered a new vector through which variables will be eliminated. All will be brought in accordance with the design. Anekra, you've been tagging along this whole time, your character Ariana, uh, witnessing the growing tension in the room, seeing the horrors that have been conjured down here. They were thinking about leaving, and they decided to just go check out the library first, and then they ran into this thing. What would our heroes like to do? What did that thing just say? The robots talk? They got robots? They're, they're like the, the guardians they used to defend the academy, I guess. Just a librarian with um, designs upon designs? That's like what the machine prince says, right? Yeah, right. Design is inexorable but also are we sure this isn't like a golem titan type of deal uh, we haven't had any dealings with that one as far as i'm aware i kind of have lost track of a lot of the supernatural powers that we've communed with slash threatened slash killed slash bargained with well this one you called for directly so 
Yeah, just a hotline straight to him. So, so to help us, right? <laughs> no. Uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It said we had a part in the design. What does that mean? Well, we did kind of open the vault. True. Were we not supposed to do that in terms of this guy's plan? Well, this guy said oh. he found some kind of vessel, so... Hey, hey, bot, what, what <laughs> vessel are you talking about? <clears throat> Condition one for the elimination of the obstacle is no longer actual. Condition two is now in play. Condition two is not contingent on your cooperation. You may function as an asset or a liability, with beneficial or deleterious results dependent on your selection. Everything you and your friends have done is conducive to the design. Okay, so kind of sounds like that thing wanted us to open the vault. And I feel like being an asset would be better than being a liability. So somebody just played a stream loots card that is entirely appropriate to the situation. Clockwork abomination. Okay. Oh, excuse me, what? Clockwork oh, abomination. That's, I think, a tier three anarchist card. Uh, carry on, don't worry about it for the moment. I know exactly how I'm going to go through this. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Well, team, we kind of keeping out of earshot of this bot thing. We do not want to be this thing's friend. Um, and no. I'm concerned why it's controlling this bot. And if there are other bots... I am worried we could be outnumbered. So we should leave? I, I've already got a good book from this place. Just casual looting. What's the bot look like? Is it like large and in charge or like a little... Absolutely not. It looks like somebody took a copper tea kettle, gave it legs and an armature. The, t the tea kettle body, it's this small little thing. The tea kettle body has a, a door on it, like a hatch that you can open. The one disturbing thing about this creature is that at the end of its armature on top is a real human eye that is blinking at you. But otherwise, it's just a small little device that uh, is telekinetically putting books back on the shelf and like organizing things. Within a, a short radius of itself, books and parchments are floating back onto the shelves. Ariana is going to walk up to the bot and poke it in the eyeball. Uh, following her closely with it. Like, okay. hey, what's this? Who are you? Explain yourself. Athlaw is going to keep an eye on the thing, on the place behind them. Okay, just monitoring back there. That's probably smart. That's probably for the best. All right, uh, Ariana, go ahead and move yourself on the map if you're doing uh, ocular poking right now. I actually can't see. Oh, just kidding. I, I can. I just I have needed very, to redirect you over here. That's all. Oh, I have very limited vision on stairs. my own map. That is because there's not a lot of light. If you move around the corner, you should be able to see more because your character does not have dark oh. vision. I do not. Hello. So now you oh. can see the bot, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Poke <around. laughs> All right. <laughs> You're asking it, who are you? Yeah. Explain yourself. This vessel channels Anachronous, the Eschaton Clock. We observe your actions. Well, that's not abnormal. My bad. She, uh, Garnet's gonna kneel down and be like, so who's the other vessel? This unit was constructed by Tarsal Lore to maintain this library. Like you? You're the vessel? We have thing? repurposed it. You're a fucking tea kettle. <laughs> You're not scary. Ariana, <laughs> you have been granted inspiration by a streamless card from chat. Go ahead and hold on to that. You can cash that in when you'd like to. All 
constructs are the province of Anachronis. This one has become our vessel. We have assumed direct control. Well, why would you pick one that's in a vault locked under the school that can't see anything? That doesn't seem very smart now, does it? You are present. We have communication with you. You may choose to be an asset or a liability. We could also just leave and leave you down here, locked in the vault, and then what? You would be a liability. What is your relationship with Tarselmora then? How do I want to answer that one? Is he just gonna stay quiet? <laughs> Tarsal lore is a means to an end, as are you. Mm, that's not. That's not that's the answer. Of confidence. That was a non-answer, as the kids say. So, who is Tarsal Moore to you? It means to an end. An end we will now enact. What's the end? Oh, the note. The Looking removal at... of an obstacle to our to the design. Hmm. You have been given the option to remove this obstacle before. You chose not to exercise this option. Instead, you deployed the Book of Dawn. Oh, I didn't oh. do that. Ah, uh, yeah. What's with the we here? You have now been given another opportunity to participate in the design. We suggest you take it. Go on. The Untermaler will be removed. You will contribute to the removal and reap the rewards, or you will interfere with the removal and be a liability. Wait, so the plot to kill Untermaller was anachronous? Apparently. <laughs> well, <I> was just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it hot in here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, hmm. What if the, the this part of the design doesn't need to happen because the uh, the we have taken a detour around that and we are kind of getting to the destination that was intended right right no no more ioth isn't that what you want mr clock Waller and his participation at the academy is not part of the design He is a dick, hmm. but of uh, true. How do you plan on removing him then? Tarselmore's prison is loosed. If you are not compliant, he will serve a similar superior function. The choice is yours. Am I understanding this correctly? Is he saying? If we don't remove Untermaller, he's going to let Tarsamore loose. Is it is already done. Dead? Death is no barrier to the arcane. Wait. Ariana will start to like scoot away from the little tea kettle robot to try to like get out of earshot of it and go back to the group and just like start whispering. What if Sig is Tarsamore? Huh? Oh, uh, uh Tarsamore's in the other room. <laughs> Things we might have missed when telling Nick or what happened. <laughs> Wait, I thought that was in the notes. <laughs> Tarsamore's in the fucking Why closet. is Tarsamore over there? Fucking no. Uh we're sure that's Tarsamore? Well, we haven't gone in to say hello, because, uh, the I demon, he's bloody evil. The demon that uh, Garnet tore apart with her shadow magic 
told you under interrogation that Tarselmor removed his own soul, put it in another object, and escaped death, and has been hidden away from all of Ioth's wizard in all of Ioth's magic inside this vault for the last several hundred years. Understandable. Still fits, though. My character is a little bit not all there all the time, <laughs> so don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Ha. Huh. Well, isn't that weird? I feel like we should get him in on the conversation. I I don't particularly want a round table with Tarsal more, but... Why not? Because he's probably evil and dangerous and wants to kill us all. But he made Sig. He's not evil and dangerous. True. The school is also still named after him in some way, shape, and form, so I feel like it's not that bad. Um, well, he was just keeping demons prisoner here, and it seems to be something between life and undeath, which generally doesn't sit with me well as, like, a hero mage, plus he was hiding from Ioth, so it was definitely something that was going on there. And also there were the screaming souls when we came in that were trying to kill people, and I feel like those screaming souls weren't just having a jolly good time. Hmm. Oh yeah, another thing, yeah. Uh, there's some evidence that suggests that Tarsal Moore may have killed a bunch of people at the school and then siphoned their souls into the pool at the front door in order to perform his experiments on life and death. Right. Minor detail. <laughs> Minor detail. It was a big week. <laughs> hmm. But but just because he wanted to do experiments doesn't necessarily mean he wanted to. Well, no, no, that does complicate things now, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. There's all the students really and staff he killed, him. you know. Ah. Like while I maybe... think we. Oh, sorry. But while Ariana's talking to the group, I think Garnet will kneel down and try and whisper to the bot and just be like, kind of getting more with an angry tone of just, so what are you planning? Because the difference between a mistake and an accident or just between the, your design and an accident or a mistake is planning and intention. And I had those things. So what are you doing right now? If you do not concoct a plan to remove Untramaller, we will deploy Tarselmore to do the same. How are, how are you going to deploy his soul? Are you going to put him in a robot? He has already released. The vault door has been opened. The seal is broken. Tarselmore rises. But we haven't seen him. Leave the room. We are aware of his presence. We know he is prepared to be deployed. We have the capacity to reach him. Who is we? We are Anachronous, the Eschaton Clock. The design is inexorable. You really think Quan can fucking kill Undamala by himself? Are you crazy? We will not deploy Quan. We will deploy Tarselmor, uh, the Archmage. Unless uh, you present an alternative, per our previous discussion. Well, our discussion didn't involve a fucking time limit. Right? What you is haven't your checked time in. frame? Well, you haven't checked in since the, the Book of Dawn, and I thought you fucking disappeared, because a lot of things changed since the Book of Dawn got opened. So I, you could have touched base a little bit, I thought you were dead. We are not easily destroyed. No Infernal has ever been destroyed. You're not except in the Scorpion. Infernal. So yeah, explain that part. You're not in Infernal. But you're working with them. What's Identify the source of this information. You answer my question first. <laughs> Identify the source of this information. Uh, fucking... My sources, I fucking made it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good argument, Garnet, but how about you back it up with a source? <laughs> but I don't have sources! <laughs> <laughs> well, 
that was enough for Chad to play a stream loot card and give you inspiration, which I think is only fair. So you've got that floating around now as well. Oh my god. <clears throat> Variables in the design have altered. The design remains the same. We are prepared to deploy Tarsal War unless you suggest an alternate plan. I have an alternate plan. I don't have time to sit here and explain it to you. It's already into effect. The plan is in motion. And you deploying shit is a liability. We have no liabilities, only topographies of ignorance. We have deployed countless contingencies simultaneously. The design's inexorability depends on backup plans. Well, I'm offended that you don't trust me. I thought we had a good relationship. I've seen what you look like. You've seen what I look like. And I know what your little puppet looks like. I thought we had an understanding. But... In IOF's office, we presented an offer to you and to Master Eldow. You hesitated. Oh yeah, what was that again? That was a uh, uh, reminder. <laughs> I, I think that no. was it. We will make shit disappear if we can kill him some more. Yeah, they were gonna basically when everything was going absolutely to hell before Ariana used the power of the Book of Dawn. Um, it was, I think, it was Uncle and yeah. Anachronist that were like, "Hey, we'll sweep all this under the rug, but we get to kill Ioth the Sage and Untramaller." They made, they yeah, offered what? a deal. And then Ariana deployed the big U button. <laughs> the, <MacGuffin. laughs> the magic nuke. Well, listen, uh, what, what do you... Okay, that we didn't get to finish our conversation there. You also are talking to his uncle. What, what, what are all these relationships you're not disclosing? We have deployed a wide variety of contingencies. Our machinations are countless and endless. Do not assume to understand all of them at once. Hey, Garnet, while you're talking to the uh, big evil mastermind of the design and things, can you ask about the date on this paper? It's today. And it was written hundreds of years ago. Let me guess. Design Is that the design? Is this the end? Today is the end? The design is inexorable. That's not answering my question. <laughs> we didn't talk about time limits. And if there's no time limit, then I assume there is no limit. I, I have a plan. It is currently in motion. I only need till the end of the year. The, the end of this year. Uh, well, uh, lore check. When does El Now's little ceremony happen? That's like in a year from now, yeah, right? Between, it's like half a year at this point because we're halfway into the school year. So it's between school years. Okay. So about six what? months before the end of the year is that is that fast enough for your design we will send for you to explain in further detail later yeah great you also shouldn't be announcing to just random students what your freaking design is you can just you could have just had a meeting with me them being aware of their presence in the design is part of the design. <sighs> right, just can you keep Tarsal Moore in his fucking cave? Because we don't need liabilities. Convince the others. Convince of what? To, to, to not know the evil demon Tarsal Moore around? I'm not sure they're down with that. You may proceed. We will check in soon. Hey, don't do anything. I don't know. Keep all your ghosties in here and your robots, apparently. All right. Okay? So you, you just look over, you see Garnet crouching down, arguing with this eyeball on a robotic teapot stick <laughs> in a hushed yeah, just... tone. Obviously, not sharing this conversation with the rest of you. Just, okay, time to. Uh... Eve? Well, while I've already got his attention, I've always wanted to say, oh, Anachronus is a teacup-ass bitch. Let's go. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Athelol waves over the robot. 
Was there any <laughs> books that like looked interesting while we were over there, or was it just? Oh, you've you've not yet stuff? begun to peruse the library. You've only just stepped in. Uh, there's quite a bit of information around here. What area of the library, and all of you, by the way, have the option of doing this. What area of the library are you digging through? Are, are there any, like, markers as to what each thing is about? Like, is there, like, an enchantment symbol, like an evocation symbol? Nope. There don't seem to be any symbols on the books. Some of them are written in all sorts of languages, from Infernal to the Deep Speech. Uh, there is an organizational system of some kind, but it's not Dewey Decimal, and it's not labeled on the shelves. You'll, you're going to have to look through and, and uh, flip through some titles. Huh. Just tell me what area you want to look at, and I can tell you what you got. I'm looking in this corner. Okay. And that was a stream loose card, The Falling Wall, The Power of Zethius. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the whose wall? The Falling Wall. <laughs> Mega Wall. Um, all right. So, given that you already have the ability to read minds, and that we've already done this to Garnet before, we're going to go ahead and lay this one at Ariana's feet. Uh, Ariana, as you're sitting here, uh, I'm going to go back to Athalor in a moment to let him peruse these shelves. As this conversation was going on, and then Athalor tells off one of the most powerful beings in Anakra. What have you been doing this whole time? Uh, I guess, like, kind of just looking around the room and just, like, browsing the books. Okay, what area of books were you browsing? I guess I will be over in <laughs> this, this little area. Yeah. Okay. As you do that, you start to hear faint whispers in your mind. It sounds like what you... Uh, you've had mental communication in your head before, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely it's like a that, bunch from me. Except instead of somebody standing there and talking to you, it's like somebody who has their back turned and is mumbling to themselves. You are now picking up the surface thoughts of Athalor and Garnet. Uh, Athalor, give me some quick surface level thoughts. Uh, Athalor's like infernal, infernal, looking for books with infernal script most of all. Garnet, give me just what's running through your head right now. Is this like during the conversation, after the conversation? Uh, we'll say after the conversation. The card wasn't played until after the conversation. So just right when it ended and I was, I was like... Asking everyone else what they were up to. Uh, like, oh, we're so fucked. I'm so fucked. This is all fucked. Like, just internal freaking out about this and what to do. Alpha Academy, the thought. <laughs> I, I think, like, <laughs> yeah, just beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I think, like, you know, Ariana, like, upon hearing that from from Garnet, would probably just, like, turn around and, like, walk over and, you know, look a little concerned, but also, like, are, Garnet, are you okay? And, Garnet, unfortunately, I'm going to have to ask you to both answer her question and narrate what you're thinking. What, what do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean, answer her question, so like... Ariana walks over to you and asks you if you're okay. So not only do you need to figure out how to respond in character, but you also need to give oh. us the background thoughts because she's picking those up too. Okay, so uh, Trolley doesn't have much to say because she's still very angry and shooketh from last session's demon slaying and her tension with Renan, who's still floating near her. So, Hello. but as soon as. <laughs> and she's still feeling kind of cold towards. Athlor, but as soon as Net, like Ariana comes up, she kind of loosens up or just kind of calms down a bit and doesn't know how to respond because she doesn't want to say anything, but she is thinking like, oh fuck, how do I tell them? And Renan can't know. 
probably like the two biggest things. Uh, I think we should just leave. Well, once we got our books, uh, kind of looks over. The bot doesn't seem to care that we're grabbing books, so <laughs> nervously is eyeballing the robot while Athlor's going through shit. Sure, yeah. Let's head out, and then maybe when we get back to our room, you and I can talk? Yeah, yeah. I'd really, 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 really love that. Um, are is still eyeballing the robot? Are we... <laughs> Do you have any books you want, Ariana? I don't know how many we're allowed to check out. <laughs> Did you bring your library cards? Under <laughs> this I... subscription. <laughs> we, well, uh, I was I was going to go maybe help Athelor look for some stuff. Kind of seems like he's browsing around the um, ch checks notes. <laughs> uh, oh, the uh, looking for like um, d d demonic script or something i don't know turn quickly turns around and starts looking at the books again <laughs> it, if you can hear athelor's thoughts he is thinking infernal as in like infernal language yes that we'll uh, start looking for for that <laughs> all right athelor in this immediate vicinity some of this is oddly familiar to you given the brain punch that you took by attempting to read tarsal moore's manual of golems earlier this whole corner is all dedicated to construct research and construct related magic. Give me an investigation check, please. Investigation. I believe I have a disadvantage as well. Uh <laughs> yes, you do for your puns. You do have several in you have an inspiration, at least one inspiration in the tank. What do we get on that roll? We've got a 10. Uh okay. So you found a scroll of animate object, the magic spell. Ooh. And you found a like a recipe book, a, a journal. It's not a it's not supposed to be like a published manuscript. It's more like journal notes on creating a homunculus. A creature like oh, F. That's fun. Rest in peace. <laughs> ah yes, two cups of soul to one part sugar. Uh, there's a lot more here, but this whole area seems to be tars a lot of Tarsal Moore's notes on constructs and the nature of constructs and how to create them and how to bind life. Um, you can continue to research this, but I'm going to go ahead and give Garnet a chance, uh, aside from being reassured by Ariana. Garnet, what are you doing while you're here? Uh... Uh... That's true. Yeah, Athor can keep perusing. I, I, I'll think of something. Athor's going to, if possible, quickly walk from this side to this side, seeing mm -hmm. if there's any language he recognizes saying the word soul. Soul? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's this whole section you're in now, necromancy, the flow of life okay. energy, tome S upon tome upon tome. Second criterion, influence. Uh, influence. Roll an investigation check. You have expunged the disadvantage that chat inflicted upon you. All right. Let's see if this might need uh, inspo. We'll have a looky. Yeah. Let's uh, let's use an inspo <laughs> on that. All right. We'll boost that nine up to a fifteen. Okay. All right. Uh. There's tons and tons of necromantic spells, but insofar as influencing a soul, some of Tarsal Moore's notes are lying around. And he's talking about uh, using souls is better. They contain high amounts of energy, less free than dawn magic, perhaps second only in flexibility. The echoes of sentience they contain within them make them perfect for creating new life. They resonate with the frequency of memory, the body crafted of body, the soul woven of souls, not fresh born of the dawn, but unraveled and spun anew as the gods themselves make new life, the hands of mortals upon the wheel of life. Ooh. Ooh, I have someone in coming? chat noted that down. <laughs> yeah, does Ariana hear this? Like, as Athelor is reading? Yeah, you'd be able to read along with him in your brain. Oh. I feel like Ariana, like, upon hearing this, would, like, 
go sneak up like uh, beside Athelor to like mm-hmm. look at what he's reading. Oh, right. What are you uh, reading? Uh, Tarsimor's notes on souls, and well, he thinks they're almost as strong as dawn magic is like a source of miracles and wonders when it comes to magic. Hmm. That kind of checks out with all the stuff I guess he was doing in here, and then his other otherworldly experiments. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, pretty close. Tar- I'm just adding to my inventory Castle Moore's soul magic notes. You also find a scroll for a sixth level spell. Holy fuck. Called Soul Cage. When a Whoa! creature dies, you can cast it as a reaction to imprison their soul in a tiny silver cage. What? That's wrong. This is really high level magic, meaning that if you try to cast it, there is a chance of failure. And the, the higher level like spells, if you have a scroll of a spell above your casting level, uh, the higher it is, the worse the chance of failure. But you have it. Another note, another piece from Tarsal Moore's notes on rituals of sacrifice and souls as a source of energy. The younger the life, the more raw potential. The older the life, the more accumulated memory. A steady balance of both is required to create a new soul. But if you want a pure source of magical fuel, youth and potential outweighs experience. Let's kill some kids. (laughs) (laughs) Was there any uh, void magic books? Where are you looking? In the void section. (laughs) Uh, You (laughs) haven't found a void section and it's not labeled. What part of the library would you like to search? So far, the bottom right is constructs. The bottom left, a lot of the bottom left, is necromancy. So, constructs, necromancy. What about where the sections I'm near? The section that you are in, that is... Let's see here. It seems to be a whole lot of just wizard spells, general arcane lore. But as you walk around, there is one book that's lying on the floor, out of place. Hasn't been replaced by the librarian yet. The book, every single page of this book is completely soaked in ink, uniformly blackened and soaked in ink, every single page. Is it wet, like it's freshly inked? Mm -mm. It's been this way for a very long time. I get any vibes from it? (laughs) <laughs> not the kind of vibes that you're used to. Not void magic vibes. Um, but like, it's a it's a very... Did I have any more details on this? Nope. It's just completely ink black pages. And the cover is blank, I'm imagining. Completely blank, smooth, polished. Almost glimmers a little bit in the light. Look what I found. <laughs> just waves a book. <laughs> I think they used too much ink on this one. Yeah, I think they may have misprinted that. Uh, shows it to the bot. Hey, do you think someone spilled ink on this? <laughs> What's wrong with this one? Uh, let's see here. <laughs> it's the Anachronous book reviews. <laughs> the book club. What's the book club say about this one? Improperly filed. No filing possible. Improperly filed? It's not... Does not belong here? Cannot file. What? Cannot file this. Why? Unregistered. No information. Well, that's weird. Was it here? Bef- was, it, was this always here? Yes, this book is part of the collection. But unread. Okay. Walks over to Athelor with the book and Ariana. Uh, do you think this is useful? If not, call it a souvenir, right? He said it couldn't be filed, hmm. so might be more difficult to see what it's missing, he says, with armfuls of books. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just take it. 
In it case. is a library. And um, hey, we, we are students of Tarsamore Hall. With knowledge of calligraphers uh, tools, mm -hmm. would I know if this is like a technique to hide scripture to mm. put fancy ink on it? Mm. Like, roll uh, roll calligraphy style. tools with intelligence, please. Twenty-five. Okay, so upon closer examination, you can see faint quill marks on the pages, as if this is a reverse book where the quill erased traces of lettering instead of adding it. Whereas, like, as if the whole page was ink and then the quill made blank paper spots, but they're barely visible scratches. And with a 25, that's a really good roll. You also see that they are backwards, reverse, flipped. There's magic at work. This is not merely a weird technique. There is absolutely magic at work. This whole book is an inverse, a, a reflection of what a book ought to be. It's like an opposite book. Just like if you were to put like a page and then take like a pencil and scratch it out, the scratches of the thing would maybe come up. Yeah, except that that's not like physically what happened. Something else happened here. But if I did that, if I put a page on top to try and draw over the scratches of the quill, would I be able to? Uh, yeah. Better... And when you do, it is the letters are backwards um, and sort of jumbled. Sound and not like English. somebody wrote this backwards, but like the, the letters themselves are flipped and the direction is flipped. So like a mirror. Like a mirror. Oh. I feel like if I can hear... God, I think about Which you this. can. It's just like yeah, a I, mirror. I Ariana would just kind of like very un... Um, without thinking about like the fact that she's thinking about this, just go, oh, what if you scratch over it and then hold it up to a mirror? Is this like obvious that she's hearing what we're th what I'm thinking of? Just or I don't know if this is a random Ariana suggestion. That's the thing you never know with Ariana. <laughs> she's got she's got the plausible deniability of just mm -hmm. being a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. Blake said, "Ariana, you're thinking what I'm thinking," and it's just yeah. very happy and it goes yeah. over to find a mirror or something. <laughs> Ariana realizes that she... <laughs> I don't know if Ariana actually knows that she is hearing their thoughts or if she's just, like, trying to be helpful. <laughs> trying to, like, think what they're thinking. I don't know. She knows the difference right now, but... All right. Helpful. <laughs> Given this helpful Ariana fact, what would you like to do? Um, so, we've all got a little bit of Reading a little bit of a knowledge nugget as a reward for our interloping and breaking in. Should we go? Ooh, ooh, give me one second. As, uh, oh, I want to now investigate the corner of books in the upper right for this area. Anything... This, yeah. Maybe like something with, uh, because you said that was the generic, the, the general, like, wizard. Mm -hmm. and magic stuff right maybe mm -hmm. there's something in there for her to read about um pyrokinesis <laughs> that or <laughs> shit. or like maybe the greenhouses because the you said there was lore mm -hmm. it mostly seems to be like spell matrices and arcane theory spell craft that sort of thing it does not seem despite the fact that tarsamore had uh a greenhouse. You're not sure if that was part of the original setup or if that was installed after he left. And he doesn't seem to have been a huge botanist. Uh, there are a number of spells in here, however. Uh, all sorts of wizardly spells. You want to do an investigation check for me? Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh. Ooh. A 23. Okay. You have found a scroll of Earthbind. It, it's a second level spell that uh, stops flying creatures from flying. 
that's exciting. And because you're a wizard, you could copy it into your spell book. <laughs> you're a wizard, Ariana. <laughs> <laughs> now, the one area of the library that nobody has investigated is up here in the top left. Uh, there's also a door you have not perused to the north. You know that think- roughly Tarsamore is somewhere over here. What would you like to do? I just wanted to find one quick book mm-hmm. about anything about divine intervention. Mm, or... div- divine intervention, huh? No Let reason me... at all. No reason whatsoever. Let me take a look. What section of the library are you searching? This, again, you've got a constructs, cleric? souls, arcane lore. Nobody's taking a look over here yet. Uh, taking a look over here, <laughs> just very carefully walking. Uh, there's a lot of infernal uh, script over here. A lot of infernal script. This whole section, uh, some of these books are made out of questionable leather from non-specific species, <laughs> uh, clad entirely in bone. Uh, there's twisted script. Scrolls that seem to be written on snake skin. This is the infernal lore and hellish magic segment of the library. It's just accidentally getting curious, like, oh, I've recognized some of these titles. Or do I, probably. (laughs) From back in the cave? Yeah, you'd recognize some of them. Like, oh, oh. There's also a table uh, on the ground with a number of books and scrolls and notes on it. Do you want to investigate the bookshelves or do you want to investigate the table first? Ooh, scrolls. Me like these scrolls. Are there any ornaments around here that look like they would contain souls? Uh, no. You have not seen any possible vessels for souls nearby. You'd be looking for something made out of the metal thinone or a gemstone or a little silver cage. Um, Although, actually, you do find, chat just gave you a treasure, you do find a small silver cage. Uh, it's currently unoccupied, but it would be what you'd use to cage a soul. It's probably worth a good amount of money, oh. too. That's a courtesy of chat. Nice. Pocket cage. <laughs> All right. Garnet, I'm going to let you read one of these notes, uh, and then I'm going to pass to somebody else, and you can either continue to read the notes or, or do something else. Zetheus has taught me the truth. Reality is a prison, and knowledge is the key. If ever I am to escape, I must understand the fundamental mystery. Creation. To weave life from nothingness. To make new minds as a god. That is power. And Ariana, you are scooping this up. Uh... I'll go ahead and pass over to Ariana or Athalor. One of you go, then the other of you go, and um, you can investigate I just one a thing. Or... Cage so Ariana can go. All right, <laughs> Ariana, you're picking up on that. You can search the shelves again. Again, there's a lot of stuff in these shelves. Every time you ask to look through, I'm basically just giving you like one thing. <laughs> so, uh, what I guess would you like to do? I would go over by the bot and mm-hmm. look around in that area to see if there's okay. anything of. Uh, interest to me. Give me a investigation or religion check. Or Arcana. I would also accept Arcana. But each of those is going to give you different types of information. I'll do an investigation check. Okay. A 16. All right. There is a tome here written entirely in Infernal. The cover is made of a reddish iron this sort of has the tint of it it looks like it's rust but it's mixed into the iron itself almost as if the iron was alloyed with blood uh it has a single infernal rune on the cover and on the inside aside from scroll upon scroll of infernal text are diagrams uh what elective are you taking never mind i remember what elective you're not taking do you read the infernal language i don't Read Infernal. However, um, I have. I can help you comprehend with languages. If you'd like to cast that, you can read Infernal. <laughs> yeah, I will cast that actually. 
Okay. The runes swirl before your eyes as you invoke the magic of comprehend languages. And you are reading page upon page of infernal battle tactics. Those diagrams are troop formations. Uh, different strategies for sending armies of, of devils and wild brigades of demons. How to demoralize mortals. How best to traumatize elven attack legions by burning down their homelands. The use of battle magic. The use of assassins to eliminate enemy war mages. Uh, it's it's all about battlefield tactics from the perspective of some demon in and the the name on the front is Uzul. It's it's basically Sun Tzu's guide to war, except it's Uzul's guide to warfare. Hmm. I think Ariana will pick it up to like hold on to it, thinking that it would be interesting to Athalor to like share with him later. Okay, add a book of infernal battle tactics to your inventory. <laughs> An iron book of infernal battle tactics. Garnet. You can continue to read these notes. You can do whatever the hell you want. What would you like to do? Uh, yeah, let's continue reading that. That's interesting. Schematics received from the mechanical messenger. Engines fueled by soul stuff. A calculation for a date hundreds of years from now. Foresight is a virtue. There's a whole bunch of math based on the rotation of different gears and the motion of the four kingdoms upon each other. Uh, and he derives from, roll an intelligence check, no, an arcana check, and this is math related, but it's magical math. math. So roll an arcana check. Math. A nine. You've got at least one inspiration floating around on you. Oh, yeah. Uh, do that. Dirty 20. All right, after you check your math, there are two dates calculated. One is on... Vindur's High Holy Day, centuries ago. The exact date is the date that Arakura died. Oh, okay. And the other date is today. There's no explanation of where this math came from, aside from Anachronist provided it. I'm going to walk over to the bot, freaking out. Like, what? what is today? What is this? It's my birthday. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get Anachronist for his birthday? A clock. <laughs> Tea kettle. <laughs> this is beyond our scope. Apologies. This is not the same voice that was echoing out of this uh, creation earlier. Who are you? I am the librarian. My task is to organize these notes and catalog, catalog everything correctly. You don't sound like the other librarian that we were talking to, like... I am the only unit assigned to this space. Master Tarsal Moore has assigned us on this duty. Oh, I don't... I don't think it's acting as a vessel anymore. We are acting as a vessel. A vessel of knowledge. Uh, okay, well, can you tell me about where the divine inter the cleric book section is? Clerical magic is a poor definition for magic. It may be partially found under the Infernal Lore section, as Infernals are capable of answering the prayers of their supplicants. You may also find it under the Animus Magic section, to the Southwest. As the flow of life energy is often considered to be the purview of the gods, the Master Tarsalor would absolutely disagree. Okay, specifically anything about divine intervention? Am I looking here or over there? Please define divine intervention. The various powers mortals refer to, perhaps surreptitiously as gods, intervene constantly and in many different ways. A spell. A spell of divine intervention? Yes. Technically speaking, any clerical magic should be considered a form of divine intervention. Can I, can I tell what Garnet is thinking about specifically as she is asking about divine intervention? Can she? Wait, what? 
was the question? Sorry. Garnet, uh, uh, Ariana can yeah. still read minds. So, what is Garnet thinking oh, about? Of? An act of oh. Another streamless card has been played. Spark of Insight. We're gonna play this two ways. First off, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw Garnet a bone here and help get to the bottom of whatever piece of information it is that you're asking about. And second, I'm gonna throw Ariana a bone by having the thought process be particularly linked to that. So, out of character, explain to me what your objective is here. Me? Yeah, out oh. of character. Explain to me what you're trying to find out. Trying to see, uh, maybe. I mean, it could be metagaming that I know what divine intervention is. Would we? That's have... fine. Tell me what. Do you mean the cleric well, class like, feature? There's a cleric background. Uh, yeah. The it's a feature. It's not a spell. Yeah. Oh shit. Uh, but that's... you can like call upon God. Mm -hmm. I think she wants like easier communication with Zalar or more consistent communication. So she thinks maybe getting learning about divine intervention and how clerics have such a good relationship with their gods and calling upon them all the time. She would want to do something like that and she has like a cleric ish background just you know uh -huh. go that way okay all right cool so i'm gonna go ahead and let ariana know that that is what garnet is going after if you're referring to direct communication between a cleric and their deity you can find some information about that in Uzul's guide to that battle magic and tactics as cutting off such creatures from their supplicants is an important part of infernal strategy. Oh, 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 I have that. Oh, I have that book. Oh, okay. Walks over. You I can like read that? It oh, oh, thanks. Well, I mean, kind of. It It's really heavy, by the way. Just Yeah, it's made of iron. But, oh. I, yeah. <laughs> oh. I, I might be able to find what you're looking for. I, I could at least read that this is... Battle tactics. Wow, I didn't know that they wrote books about how they do war. That's not smart to do that publicly. All right, I guess we have this now. All right, uh, Garnet, as you take a look at this book, um, this was basically a top secret document that is intended for mortal generals who are serving in Uzul's uh, Iron Empires in order to instruct them. It's an instructional book like devils and fiends teaching mortals how to run oppressive military empires in their name. Was there anything about um, use, or working with scribes during uh, the war? Scribes? Clerics? Just scribes, because an anachronist is a scribe, mm, right? Nope. Nothing about scribes in this book. Hmm. The section on clerics, however, uh, so all divine magic is the result of a person performing rituals or having a direct connection to their deity. They provide, like, if you are a god, then you are capable of sharing your power with your followers. The stronger their faith, the more that they've done, the more power they get invested in them by the deities. So all divine magic is basically, instead of the... That's why clerics don't have to study at IOF Academy, because they don't have to learn as nearly as much magical theory because their deity ships them the spell to their brain and uses them as a channel. In order for them to cast more powerful spells, they still have to do all the meditation stuff that you do, but they don't necessarily have to hold the whole spell matrix in their head because they get it from their deity directly, which is why they focus a lot more on piety, living a life that their god would be proud of, uh, doing their God's work so that they earn more of that power and also making themselves able to hold more of that power within themselves as a vessel because that part the God still needs their help with. Divine intervention is when a cleric is in such good standing with their deity that they literally just call out to the God and say, please help. <laughs> help me. And the God, it's like, it's it's a power, sure, but it's really just the same thing as when you say Zalar's name out loud, except that Zaylar's most powerful followers have almost more of a direct line. So when they say that name, Zaylar's a lot more likely to notice in the in all the divine, because gods can perceive a whole lot at once, but they're not omniscient. They can't necessarily parse all of it at once. So when when your uh, father called out to Zaylar for deliverance on the battlefield as Uzu's legions were attempting to conquer Brontha, he activated divine intervention. He just had a way higher chance of Zaylar hearing. Zaylar heard, and Zaylar laid the smackdown on the Iron Empire. So it's really just a factor of a cleric's direct relationship to their god. It's not a special divine ritual or anything. Oh, okay. So I they recommend assassinating the crap out of those level. people. 
Exactly. <laughs> no. Exactly. It's like uh, Zalar is so cool. Zalar is the Sunrider, by the way. Yeah, I call him by his. You know, I know pro players, but it's no big deal or anything. <laughs> yeah, I know pro deities, but it's whatever to me. I can call him by his first name because we're tight like that. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll that's probably be bummed out mm -hmm. about that. No, I, or maybe fully understanding that, and maybe just reading about the cleric section and the infernals anyway, and mm -hmm. can move on from that. There is a mention of Kalor, who is the first, the founder of Brontha, oh. who wrecked the crap out of the infernal armies shortly after the death of Arakura by invoking divine intervention. Sort of started the priesthood. Zaylar was already worshipped, but like the, the religion, the priesthood, the whole priest kingdom of Brontha was founded because Kalor said, hey, I've got this, Zaylar has our back, and did called in the phoenix and laid waste to everybody. Uh, but th this is recorded not from like a, the mythical first prophet stuff that you got taught in Brontha. It's more an example of how bad it can be if you let the enemy clerics live, because we got our asses handed to us once on the battlefield by this asshole. Okay, and, and divine intervention isn't something you can learn unless you're a cleric. Yes. Uh, okay. But Sad. all like you, you basically need to get chummy with the Zalar for that to work. Yeah. Hey, we can I... level up at the end of this year. Multi oh, baby. <laughs> I don't get fucking killed. <laughs> <laughs> if we didn't fucking die. <laughs> all right. Um, and cool. Ariana, you would again be privy too much of this. Uh huh. I think she'd keep her mouth shut, though, because I think at this mm. point she realizes that she's hearing things she's not supposed to hear. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, wait, that, that's weird. I don't know why <laughs> Garda would be thinking about Zayla. <laughs> uh, Athelor, <laughs> while the two of them are in the infernal lore section, what are you doing? Uh, Why did you, you just kill? Who, who just killed Garnet? Why is Garnet X out? No, I didn't mean to. Right. Uh, uh, please, please unkill. unkill Garnet. Go ahead, Athelor. <laughs> uh, can you give me a quick rundown of the other Infernals? Like, not Zephyr, not the Herald, not mm. Uzul. Not me. Not <laughs> for my name. How, uh, <laughs> how much lore would Athelor have about them? Have you a good amount a good from, like, heroic histories. Okay. All right, so from the heroic histories, Uzul, the warlord of the Infernals, the leader of the fiends in battle, the lord of destruction, always was sort of the top dog amongst them, but his position was predicated on his continued success in battle. So when they got their asses handed to him in Luminius before he conquered it, his position, like everyone was immediately blood in the water, right? You had the Scorpion, who is the Infernal that he went to for help, who all the other Infernals were afraid of. The Scorpion is the one who poisoned the love of Barash and Lotne and led them into a trap. So the Scorpion could be described as the one who has the most influence on the minds of its victims. Yes, except for the fact that the Scorpion is the only Infernal ever recorded to have be dead. Okay. Barash killed gonna, the Scorpion. I'm still going to have Athelor look for mentions of a Scorpion on book titles. Well, this would be the place. Uh, <laughs> roll a... Um, Arcana, religion, or investigation check. I would also well, accept history. Run. Let's, uh... Let's run Arcana. That's gonna be another inspiration. Okay, well, you've, uh... I'm tanking over shit rolls today, team. Don't worry. Okay, 15. The Scorpion. The Infernals arrived at the time of dawn, drawn by the light of this young world eager to exploit it, to make it their own, to set upon a place that knew only joy and did not yet know how to defend itself. Uh, Uzul led them, countless other in uh, infernals, which were just fiends drawn from other worlds out in the hungry dark, all of them hoping to use this as their rise to power for various reasons. The Scorpion, all of them brought their legions with them, but the Scorpion came alone, tagging along. The Scorpion was a being of hatred and spite. The Grey Jester is the mocking god who loves to make a mockery of everything. But the Scorpion just hated and delighted in everyone's pure misery. So much so that when the other Infernals made reluctant alliances to work together to set aside their bickering and their backstabbing in order to conquer this young world and take over Luminius, Scorpion had nothing to do with it. And they left the Scorpion to their own devices just off 
set up in one part of the Dawn world, just ruining things, making a festering pile of putridness, a twisted reflection of any beauty and joy that might have once existed. Uh, so the scorpion is one of the least un well understood. The only reason the scorpion intervened was because Uzul went to the scorpion and described the love and the bond of Barash and Lotne together. And uh, the scorpion could not turn down the opportunity to ruin something so beautiful and so pure. And so the Scorpion set up this entire trap that lured Barash out of the city, let Lotne think that Barash was dead, Lotne's powers failed, the Infernals were able to attack, Barash f returned to Luminius to find it destroyed, went after the Scorpion, the Scorpion taunted Barash with the shade of, of Lotne as he was just drained of all of its light and color and joy, and Barash in his pure rage slew the Scorpion with a thinown trident. And the three of them fell together into a river of blood. And the scorpion was killed. And that is the only infernal that has ever died. And the, there are no recorded incidents of the, of the scorpion ever co cooperating with anyone. So influence over other infernals? No. They feared it. Thinown weapons. Thinown is a metal more? that can absorb souls. Okay. Noted. Oh, guys, I'm getting freaked out. Should we go? Yeah. Does anybody else have any other business in this library? There are more notes. There's lots and lots more books, but none of it is any more pleasant than what you've already discovered. I can assure you of that. What would you like to do? We'll take Inky Book with me. Okay. To... Make sure it's in your inventory so you don't forget. I've got plenty of extracurricular reading. <laughs> okay. Um, Ariana, on our way out, uh, as we're about to leave, can we try and get a little bit more of that soul goo in another vial? Sure. I'm not really sure what we could use it for, but, but maybe there's a book in here that'll help us to figure that out. Almost certainly, oh, and it would some. be... In the necromancy section. Yeah. I will go search for one real fast while we are on our way out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I might have already taken most of the relevant notes. <laughs> I think Ariana knows this, but we'll double check anyway. Just okay, go ahead and roll an investigation check, please. Twenty-three. <clears throat> Souls can be used as power to create magic items. They're a source. A magic item is a long-term anchored spell matrix, right? But you have to keep it stable and it needs a source of power. You can use soul stuff as a source of power to create magic items, to infuse your spells with extra juice, essentially. Uh, if you know the proper rights, because it's like a... A vial of soul stuff is not like a fireball, right? You can't just turn it into a fireball unless you know how to break it down and harvest its power. It's a lot easier to use it for certain specific applications, but if you know the correct ways, you can use soul stuff as fuel. It's kind of messed up, but very doable. Sweet. So uh, I, I will try to carry as much as I can. <laughs> how many like vials do you have that you want to fill with... Uh... I With... think I only have one vial on me right now, but mm -hmm. I think she would look around to see if there's like a larger container that is carryable that she could like fill up like a like a vase or like an urn or so a bowl. not in this area, but I will point out that in the summoning room, there were alchemical uh, tools and equipment and all that sort of stuff. Cool. So she's going to get the largest beaker she can find and fill it up. And, All right. And, so and, and you're going to need to travel to the summoning room, which is on the opposite side of the dungeon. Sure. All right. Um, If you can find one under Walk 10 pounds, over. I can uh, have it filled up from afar with my mage hand. Okay. Ariana will run off. And I think we should definitely fill it up as we're leaving. Okay. <laughs> Farther away from the group. In case more of those... <laughs> she just... Yeah! I'm off! See you in a second! <laughs> yeah. 
And they were, Garnet was just running after her. Wait, it's dangerous over there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So who, where all is everybody going? Is everyone going to the laboratories or no? Uh, Athol's going to keep an eye out here. Mm-hmm. And Ariana, uh, you were here, though Necro wasn't, and the laboratories are that way. That way. As you can see, like, Ariana in the middle of this room or something, just kind of, like, spinning around, like, trying to figure out, like, which way to go. <laughs> just, like, Garda helps her, like, oh, this way. Or have we gone to the lab? Or was yeah, the, the laboratory was the same room as the shadow demon. You didn't poke around at everything because uh, Athlor just walked in and Actually, uh, Mama Shimada does bring up a good point. There's some, like, very fine dining goblets and stuff on the table if you want to use one of those. I think she'd, she would have snatched up one of those and then also ran into the other room to see if there was anything else. Okay. <laughs> Head on up. Yeah, I have there. got a lot of books right now. <laughs> so Kind of loaded <laughs> down. Athelor is kind of loaded. All right. Uh, so, Ariana, in this room, you've got the summoning, the binding circle, which is where the shadow demon was stored before. Uh, permanent mm -hmm. magic circle. And then around the room, you've got another statue of skeleton mode tarsal more right here. There is a whole bunch of chemical reagents on this table. And here as well. So that is where you could absolutely find... Um, there's potion ingredients, uh, ritual implements. Also, you notice there's already a flask of soul stuff, glowing soul stuff, sitting there on that table. Oh, I'll take that. How useful. You also Just see a potion of healing. Ooh, snag that. The Ooh. flask of soul stuff. Okay. A vial of something cloying and dark that's like circulating, almost like ink or liquid shadow. Ooh, can I look at that? Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a uh, cool. liquid. It's liquid shadow. It can be used as a crafting element, or you can throw it, and it'll turn into a cloud of darkness. So it's like a flask of darkness. Mm -hmm. It's liquid shadow. It's exactly what it says on the tin. Oh. It acts as like the darkness spell where it's like mm -hmm. magical darkness that you can't see. Yep. Is it the same range as darkness? Uh, no, because like you have to yeet it. You have to yeet it. Yeah, it's like Vanta Black. <laughs> I like to think that it's uh, it it says like living shadow on it, and then it's got like a stick in it that says Tarsal Morse, do not touch. Milk <laughs> <laughs> in the fridge. Warning: life shadow demons inside. I don't know what I expected. Um, there's <laughs> also two flasks of a bubbling, rusty, old blood colored substance, uh, which you've never seen before. You could roll Arcana or you could roll Alchemist's tools to identify it. That Ariana thing? Or I, either of you can take a hack at that. Can we both take a hack at it? Yeah, go yeah. for it. Cool. <clears throat> Oh, I guess I'm not 20. No, I don't uh, think I 20. need to do anything. Ah. I'll hear yeah. it from Garnet's head anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. <laughs> Liquid pain. Ooh, I like the what? That. Uh, when a creature, uh, Garnet, you happen to have read about this probably way back in Merrick's cave or something. There is a ritual that you can do when a being suffers unspeakable agony, usually in torture, to extract their suffering and magically condense it into liquid form. And it has to happen while they're actively suffering? Yes. Aww. Excruciating torment. It can be used as a source of magical power. Uh, it's also a highly addictive drug. To? Mortals. Drug, you say? Mm -hmm. So we, you extract the pain and then you give it to someone else if they drink the liquid? Yeah, they get, you know how when the body experiences pain, it releases like adrenaline and endorphins to deal with the pain? Oh, yeah. It triggers that part without the suffering, except that after it wears off, uh, almost any sort of stimulus hurts you for a while. Oh, so it's like numbing juice. Mm-hmm. 
with adrenaline. Uh, it's it's creation is strictly prohibited at Ioth Academy for obviously torture related reasons. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I could have bagged this one if, if, if Ariana doesn't mind. So there's two flasks of that. Again, please keep track of this. Uh, three flasks of acid, the kind that melts stuff. Mm. And one flask of unholy water, uh, also like a 10-pound beaker. I'll take that. Cool. <laughs> You're like a unholy You're going to grow an evil-ass fucking plant. Isn't it just tap water, then? It's just unholy? Like, yeah. Just L- it's, water. Just, it's just L.A. tap water. <laughs> LA oh. tap water. <laughs> True. So that's what's in this area. This seems to be where the alchemical stuff is. There are a few other tables and nooks scattered around. Um, the party already went into this room, and Athlor stole a bunch of stuff from this area. Again, more notes off the table. Also, bedtime reading. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Does the liquid pain have, like, adrenaline so it stops people from passing out, or is it just, mm-hmm. like, they just don't feel pain? Okay. No, they, they not only do they not feel pain, but they feel the adrenaline and endorphin rush that would be triggered by pain without the pain. Okay. Again, highly asking addictive. For a friend. <laughs> Just asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Go on then. Uh, anything else while you're here in Tarselmore's vault here in the summoning room? Can we take note? Of the runes that binded this demon. Yes, you and can. Is this rec- recreatable. Yeah, it's a level three spell called Magic Circle, except this is a permanent version of it. So it's not just something you can draw on the ground. You have to like know the spell. Yeah, you have to be able to cast the spell in order to do it permanently because it is not just words; it's also a spell matrix. But wizards could. Wizards could copy this and learn the spell. Granted, you can't cast it until you're level five, which requires you to finish the school Aww. year. Well, we're going to die before Not that. Die before level five? <laughs> Do you mean like your characters are going to die or we're all going to die of old age? What's what's the... <laughs> Just die I'm getting on, I'm I getting say, on. I say as I continue to dangle plot and thread and, and rooms and dungeons in front of you, I'm equally to blame <laughs> for all of this. We were doing so well before you decided, you know what, I think Terran Imbus is going to attack. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now just Ariana. Hey, you you can you can learn this stuff, right? Oh, the, you need to take several hours to study it in order to learn the spell. Um unless you come back here later. Never mind. I think this will take too long. Oh, can I take a picture? <laughs> can we take so a just picture? Just your iPhone. <laughs> Xbox, clip that. <laughs> what if I like image memory, picture memory, and then minor illusion it to her, and then she like learns it through minor illusion? Plus one XP. Do you have like perfect photographic memory? I have a twenty intelligence. <laughs> That's okay. Pretty good. Then later on, you can make an intelligence check to reproduce this to hold it there for hours, focusing on this spell while she copies it. All right. Deal. If you, if you make Deal. an intelligence check later, it's doable. Winnable. 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 Does anybody have anything else they'd like to do in Tarsimor's vault? I just scoop the goop and go. Okay. <laughs> scoop the goop. <laughs> uh, Athelor magically use, scoops the goop, and our heroes will depart Tarsimor Hall. Passing, uh, could I have you, Ariana, roll 1d4 for me, please. Oops. Ignore that. (laughs) Two. Uh, Two? Okay, don't worry about it. You're able you're able to depart. It is the thirteenth of the month of Sunrider. Um and you have I think you have a three day weekend this week. Yes, you do. Oh, before uh, we leave. Quick thing. Yes. I'm set the uh arcane arcanist magic aura mm-hmm. on all the void magic remnants of the door mm-hmm. to appear to divination magic as uh the pixie uh, pixie fey magic stuff. Okay. I was planning on doing that. All right. Uh, frame the pixies for melting the thing. All right. 
That is a concentration spell with a duration of 24 hours, meaning that you cannot cast any other concentration spells for the next day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, does it take... So if my familiar casts that, because it's a touch... But you're the one who maintains the concentration. Your familiar cannot concentrate on a spell for you. Okay. (laughs) Any other last-minute things while you're down here? Okay. Who ended up with the uh, with the Oozle book? I think I brought it. I should probably yeah. add it to my inventory. Ariana had it. Did you give it to Garnet? Oh, sorry. If you want it, you can. I don't think I. I, I think I handed it to her to look at, but I ultimately took it back. Okay. Okay. Just cool. make so sure it's on somebody's character sheet. Athelors it later. Okay. I've got my elective to study for later. Well, okay. Well, I added it as like a backup to mine, and but you have it to think about (laughs) in that case our heroes depart tarsal moor's vault returning once more to the upper floors of the hall that bear his name with the information haunting in the back of their heads that the mysterious vanished founder of this school of this hall may never have left may have been awakened once again and may still return And when we come back from a short break, our heroes will be able to digest everything that's happened, deal with the consequences of Anachronous' scheming, have a little meeting with the mechanical messenger, uh, a large one, thank you, chat. All this and more right after this break. Don't worry about it. Don't don't, don't worry about it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. 